Good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you for joining us uh, online. We're living um, in interesting days, and um, you know, you're used to hearing fear here and panic here on the news, the social media, and we want, our prayer is that we be a source of encouragement uh, to you, and um, you know, one of the beauties uh, of the church, and I'm sure you believe the same, is that uh, we believe that the church is not limited to an area, uh, brick and mortar, but the church is people. And so the church is where you are. And so we're going to have church wherever you are, whether it's in your living room uh, or in your room, wherever you're watching this. We believe that the power of God and the hand of God is not too short to go through your monitor screen or your television, but it can actually reach where you are, uh, you're at. So today we're going to have worship. Uh, I got a word I can't wait to share that's burning in my heart. We're going to pray. Uh, but we also have, we have a guest with us that uh, the Rockland folks may not know as well, uh, but the people in Embram know him very well, Pastor Chris MK. He's here with us, and uh, for those of you who don't know him, he helps us uh, tremendously uh, with his wife, Brenda, uh, in Embram. Uh, he helps me. Every time I leave after I preach over there, he's the one who takes the mic. He leads the people in prayer. He concludes the service. They lead us in worship. They're doing a fantastic job in Embram. Uh, they're, loved for, uh, they're loved by our people in Embram. And so uh, we have Pastor Chris. I'm going to ask him to lead us in prayer. And maybe just before, I'm going to put him on the spot and ask him to maybe share a few words. There's a, uh, so good morning, Pastor Chris. Good morning. Good morning, Pastor. And, uh, you know, I don't know if you've been to Costco or Walmart I or have, Independent. Fact. And uh, people, I mean, it's like the end of the world out there. Like, people are just, uh, you know, they're panicking, they're rushing. And so uh, you've got people that are just tired of this whole panic fatigue. Yes. And then you've got people who are generally concerned and afraid. And right. so what would you say to people uh, right now as an encouragement to them? Well, that's a great question. And I think for, first and foremost... Uh, I think it's important that we do not fear and that we don't follow the herd mentality. As a church, Jesus said, I think it's one of the greatest promises for me personally and I think for us. He said, I am with you to the very end mm. of the age. That's good. And it's certainly not the end of the age. In fact, this too will pass. So I think it's a, a wonderful opportunity to be the church. And I'm reminded of the fact that the coronavirus is a small C and Christ is a capital C. It's a, he's a big C. And so he said, all power in heaven and earth has been given to me, therefore go. So I don't think our mandate has changed. So let's go with the good news. Let's go with hope. Let's go with love. Let's go with faith, believing God to change the Amen. situation. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Oh, Lord, Lord, thank you, Lord, that you're touched with the That's feelings right. of our infirmities. Thank you, God, when we're concerned about things, Lord, you're concerned about mm. things. And so, Father, we pray for this world, this frightened world. We pray, oh God, that we it would be an opportunity for your church to arise and to be the light and to give the hope Hallelujah. of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that while everything else yes. is shaking, Lord, we serve an unshakable king Hallelujah. in an unshakable kingdom. And so, Lord, we thank you for the hope, the hope that is like an anchor to us. And so, Lord, thank you for the opportunity, Lord, to be your church and to be the light to the world. And, Lord, I pray for your, your people, O oh God, that we would arise in a fresh way. Lord, bring a revival. Bring a fresh Hallelujah. awakening yes. in our hearts. And, Lord, we pray that uh, even during this, this broadcast that you would touch hearts yes. by the power of your spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Cut that. <laughs>
Hallelujah. And today is the day that we can rejoice, Lord, because you gave us that day. And we have no fears because you don't worry. So why would we worry? You gave us all, everything, and we rejoice in your holy name. Thank you, Father. I'm able to trade my sorrows, to put my fears aside, and just to lift up my hands and praise your holy name. Thank you, Father, for your unconditional love.
so that we can be your beacon of light and we can just show how good you are and that you will never forgive us or forsake us. This is our prayer to you this morning, Lord, that you set a fire in our soul, that you set a fire in our heart, that you keep that fire burning hot so that we can be your army, we can We can feel that warmth. No place. 
all we have just because we accepted you as our Savior, but every morning we do that walk with you. And we're so happy that you walk with us. So thank you for holding us, for watching over us no matter what. Just like a father watching his children walk and stand, you are, you are with us. And this morning we can all commit again and just reaffirm that yes, you are our father and our savior. So thank you for that opportunity that you give us every morning, every day, all day long to just look up to you and be there. Jesus, I belong. 
just take a moment if you're in your living room, you're in your bedroom, wherever you are right now, just take a moment with your family, whoever you're listening to, just to close your eyes and lift up your hands towards him today and just give him all the praise and the glory. Say, Lord, in the midst of my uh, storm, whether it's my storm, my personal storm, my family storm, or whether it's a collective storm as a community or as a nation, uh, that we feel that we're in a time of storm. Lord, today we believe in you. Today we believe in you. Today our hope is in you. As Pastor Chris said earlier today, Lord, you have a capital C. Uh, Lord, coronavirus or whatever uh, storms that we go through, they have a, 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 a single, they have a small, a small C. But Lord, you have a capital C. You, you have been given the name above every other name. And so today our confidence, our faith, uh, our hope, uh, Lord, our strength comes from you. And, and so today we believe in you and we worship you, God. We praise you because you're so worthy of all the adoration and all the praise, oh God. And so, Lord, thank you for a fresh measure. Uh, for us who are here and the, uh, whoever's going to be listening online, uh, whoever's there uh, in their homes, Lord, thank you that your hand is not too short to reach down and touch them. I thank you for a fresh strength uh, and fresh peace. I pray for that peace of God. I pray for that joy of the Lord upon their life uh, right now to grip them. Uh, Lord, I pray that there be no spirit of fear on their life, but there be a spirit of peace uh, and a, a joy and the love of the Lord and the peace of God and the hope of the Lord that we start uh, captivating our hearts and our minds in you. And we bless you, we honor you, we thank you for everything you have in store for us and for all of your children. In Jesus' mighty name, and everyone say amen. Go ahead and applaud wherever you are and applaud how great and awesome our God is because he is worthy to receive all our praise and adoration. Amen. Uh, at this moment, I'd welcome you to New Beginning Church, and I'd say high five, you know, five or ten people. But right now, let's pretend we did or give a nice uh, virtual handshake to someone. Uh, if you're watching on the platform, you could go in the chat and say hi. Uh, just go and write down, uh, write a few words if you want of greetings. We're going to get and, and share some announcements. I want to thank the worship team for being with us uh, and coming. And uh, again, we're working really hard to... Uh, this is unpleasant. We'd love to have you here in person, uh, but listening to the advice of our uh, public health and government and also just uh, council, uh, we, we want to make sure that you're, uh, you're safe and uh, everybody could uh, watch in the comfort of where you, wherever you are. And again, thank you to the worship team for coming out and uh, you know worshiping for the audience of one here, but uh, also for you. Uh, just want to share a few announcements. Um, that are uh, very important about the next few days and the next few weeks uh, for New Beginning Church. I want to let you know that we're continuing uh, some of our services. So uh, Wednesday nights, uh, we're going to continue to meet. We're not going to meet here, but we're going to meet online. Uh, we're working together uh, with uh, um, the, the, the link that you're going to see at the bottom of the video or the, the link that you're already on watching this. This is the link I encourage you to keep visiting uh, throughout the week. Uh, throughout the days to come because everything is going to be happening at that link. So you got to remember it, bookmark it, favorite, uh, favorite it, um, newbeginningchurch.online.church. And so we're going to post everything there. Uh, we're going to have a kind of a, a prayer meeting uh, online uh, uh, via Zoom and via that, that place, that link that I just shared. Uh, for those who don't have internet, we're going to have a phone number as well that we're going to share with you that you could just dial in for free and you could put us on speakerphone and you could participate to the prayer meeting. We could hear you at the same time. Uh, on Friday, the youth are also keep, they're, they're going to have a service as well uh, online. And so you check out that uh, link again uh, for youth. And then uh, until further notice, we don't know how long uh, until uh, we actually be together again. Uh, but one, do, one thing we do uh, want to assure you is that we're working really hard our team is working really hard to uh, kind of adjust to the situation that we're in right now. Uh, we want to give our 200% so that um, in the midst of all the voices that we hear and that we see, that here you all always find a voice of hope, uh, of encouragement, of comfort, and of faith. Uh, during this time, we're going to continue to encourage you and speak the Word of God and worship together, uh, even though we're not uh, physically together. And so 
uh, call it Church Online for a bit. And so if you're not uh, subscribed to our YouTube channel or Facebook or newsletter, uh, do send us an email at info at newbeginning-church.com. Let us know. We'll try to connect you so you get all the info uh, you can get. Also, check out our website regularly. We're going to have one post uh, called Coronavirus or COV-19 update, and we're going to put everything there, FAQs, uh, how we're going to go forward uh, from now in our church and uh, we're following and monitoring, just like you, everything that has been recommended uh, by our government. Just um, more announcements on this again. Uh, we're, we, we're, we're supposed to have an annual business meeting on the 22nd of March. Uh, right now, we're, uh, it's to be determined. We still don't know what's going to happen. And so for now, uh, it's safe to say that it will be canceled but postponed to another day. So we'll let you again uh, more inform that. Uh, both New Beginning Church Rockland and New Beginning Church Ambrum for now uh, we're going to be meeting online uh, for now. But do share your prayer requests. You're going to have a tab uh, on the platform that you're using right now to share prayer requests. Uh, do share them. Uh, there's a chat. You could also share some uh, requests there. we got a team of moderators that are there to assist you and re reply to you. That chat's going to be open half hour before the service and half hour after. And then we're going to shut it down. But you always have a tab uh, to contact us, and uh, throughout the week, the church is going to be open, but not for uh, public gatherings, so feel free to uh, to meet up with us, or uh, call us, or contact if you want, um, uh, so that's uh, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday, you want to check out that link, newbeginningchurch.online.church. Uh, also, some are wondering how to give, uh, as you know, we, some, we have some obligations still, even though you're not here, we still have some uh, obligation for those of you who give regularly. There's four ways you could give uh, during this time. Uh, number one, you go on our website. There's a donate button. You could give either by PayPal. Uh, there's a secure way to give by PayPal. Some are not so uh, keen on giving by PayPal. If you don't want to give by PayPal, that's okay. You could also give by Canada Helps. Also on the same page, you'll find a link uh, to it. Everything you give to Canada Helps, though. We'll get, uh, you'll get a receipt from Canada Helps at the end of the year just to let you know, but it is a recognized Canadian charity, and so everything you give to them, they give to us. You could give that way. You could give by the old-fashioned, uh, to give by a check. Some of you are still loving the check idea, so if you want to give by check, do send it by mail if you want, or come in and uh, send it here if you want. And uh, number four, and this is new, uh, you could give by e-transfer. And so all you got to do is through your bank, whatever bank you have, if you want to give, can as well just send an email by e-transfer at info at newbeginning-church.com and uh, you can write whatever uh, security question but uh, if you can make the security answer NBC in um, uh, non-caps that would be appreciated and again there's many ways you could uh, give out through, during this time uh, again that we don't know how long uh, will be thank you so much let's pray for the offerings father we thank you for the abundance that we have Thank you for everything you've given us. And today, would you receive the tithes and the offerings for the advancement of your kingdom? We ask this in Jesus' name, and everyone say, amen. amen. Well, thank you for joining us again uh, this morning. Uh, today, we're looking at part four of our series on Lord, Teach Me uh, to Fight, a series of messages on how to fight uh, the good fight, but fight right. And if you're just joining us or haven't heard any of the prior messages, I encourage you to go online. Uh, there's part one, two, and three. You could always catch up there if you want and, um, um, and uh, catch up on where you left off. Today, I want to talk about the battle of faith, the battle of faith. And I believe the Lord has a word for us uh, for the days we live in today. And uh, you know, we've talked about it already, and uh, we've heard all the bad news out there and uh, it's very easy, I don't know if this happened to you, but this week this happened to me as I'm watching the news and watching some posts on social media. Uh, I, what, what begins to happen, it's very easy for all of that information and, and how people are reacting to uh, fuel fear uh, in my heart. And uh, it's interesting that when I would go and open my Bible and start reading the Bible and start spending time worshiping the Lord and praying, uh, it would actually fuel faith. And so I want to encourage you during the times we live in to fuel your faith. And uh, one theolog theologian said it really well. Uh, he said um, that we are to have the Bible in one hand 
and the newspaper in another. And uh, that's, the, that's the whole spirit of this is that uh, you don't have your two hands in the newspaper. But uh, that's how we're going to be able to keep our sanity in the days we live in. And that's going to be the time, that's how we could uh, enjoy uh, the peace of the Lord and the joy of the Lord so that um, uh, God will renew our hope and our vision and uh, in the midst of this, pa- in, the mi- in the midst where the world needs peace, uh, in, the, in the time where the world needs uh, to see the church uh, shine. I really believe that the days we live in is the perfect opportunity for the church to shine at its best uh, because our God is present. Our God is alive and our God is accessible. You know, with everything that is canceled uh, from uh, whether it's the ba- travel bans on certain countries, uh, the NHL that is playing behind closed doors, canceling the whole NBA season, the stock market uh, in our nation crashing in a way that we haven't seen in the last 80 years, uh, great events being canceled, school canceled for three weeks. Uh, you know, the kids are saying amen to that, not the parents. And, uh, you know, even our public gathering, our prime minister that is locked up in his own home, self quarantined because his wife was infected, uh, you know, it's very easy to, to fuel our fear in this day. But we have hope. We have hope in a God who, and believe me, he is accessible, he is close, uh, he is available, and he is not self-isolated. Amen? He's available and willing to draw near to us. So friends, yes, be prudent, be cautious, apply good common sense and what the health safety department recommends. But let's not follow uh, the trend of panic. Um, you know, we could stand on the multitude of promises we have in this book and, uh, you know, and, and be a voice of inspiration during this time. Let's not let the voice of fear paralyze us and paralyze the church from shining. Amen? I'm pretending, like I'm assuming you're saying amen on the other side. I got one guy, Dave, he's, he's, he's saying amen to everything I'm saying. So that's good. Uh, you're allowed to say amen at home. That's okay, too. Um, I'd like to bring your attention to Second Chronicles, uh, chapter 20. You'll see on the platform you have uh, access to a Bible. Uh, feel free to uh, search it. You'll have it. You have your Bible at home. Great. You could do that as well, too. The Battle of Fate, Second Chronicles 20. Uh, we're going to look at verse 1 to 18. After this, the Moabites and Ammonites, with some of the Mernites and all the ites out there, uh, came to wage war against Jehoshaphat. Now, for those of you who don't know Jehoshaphat, um, he was a he was a, a king. Uh, he was actually the fourth king of Judah when uh, Israel split up and had kind of a, a division. And he was the fourth king of Judah. He was about thirty five years old when he became uh, king, and he reigned for about twenty five years. And this is uh, dating about uh, 873 to 848 B.C. Jehoshaphat uh, had some challenge during his reign. His children didn't follow in his path. He had many people that he was uh, that was under his leadership that didn't follow in his path, uh, that did uh, evil things. Uh, but uh, overall, he was a good king. And the way the Bible describes kings in the Old Testament, you were either a godly king or an evil king, a king who walked with the Lord and did what was right in the eyes of the Lord or not. And he was one of those who did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. Verse 2, some people came to this king named Jehoshaphat and said, a vast army is coming against you. All right? If you're at home, you're listening to this, I want you to repeat with me, a vast army. A vast army is coming against you from Edom, from the other side of the Dead Sea. It is already in uh, Hazazon, Tamar, that is uh, En Gedi. Verse 3, alarm, Jehoshaphat. Let's pause here. I like the New Living Version that translates that word by saying that Jehoshaphat was terrified by this news. The English Standard Version, this is actually my favorite version, um, of, of the Bible, it translated the original word by afraid. Jehoshaphat was afraid. The New King James says that Jehoshaphat feared. So we get the sense that this king, this man of God, heard the news that a vast army was coming against him and against his people. And I love this about the Bible 
is it doesn't hide the fact that Jehoshaphat was afraid, terrified, and he feared. You know, sometimes we get the impression that the Bible character or great leaders who had uh, much faith or much boldness and much courage, we get the impression they were never afraid. We get the impression that they never had a moment of, uh, of being terrified or afraid. But the Bible doesn't hide the fact that this king had great fear. He was terrified. He was uncertain. And uh, to be honest, sometimes there's moments where we act and we walk by faith and those steps are, or we take steps by faith, but we do it afraid. I like how someone illustrated those times. He says, it's like when, uh, when we take steps of faith, uh, we take steps of faith when we're afraid. It's like, uh, it's like a duck on the surface of a water. On the, on the surface, above the water, the, the duck looks calm. He looks confident. He looks like he's at peace. And you, you don't want to look on, on top of the water. What you wanna, what, where you want to be looking is beneath the water. Because that's where it's all happening. He's pedaling. It's happening when he's pedaling. And sometimes God is asking us to do something or we do something in life that is uh, terrifying us. And we do it by faith. We do it. We don't let our fear uh, dominate us or control us or paralyze us. And we do it anyways. We look on the outside like we're confident and, and we got everything figured out. But it's underneath the water. It's inside that we're pedaling, uh, not knowing where we're going. And so sometimes that's how it feels. And Jehoshaphat is afraid. Uh, the people maybe are looking at him for, you know, for, for confidence, for what's our next step. You're the leader. And uh, he, was, uh, he was terrified, the Bible says. He was in fear. And uh, I love this about the Bible. It doesn't hide the fact that while there's a vast army coming to attack, he's afraid. And I want to say this, that it's normal to feel afraid when the doctor gives you a negative report about you or about a, a family member. Uh, it's normal to feel afraid when your boss is saying, we're going to have to, you know, times are tough right now. We're going to have to lay off some people. I, I want to say that it's normal to feel afraid when, you know, it's, it's that time of year where we normally see that the water, the level of the water of the river are rising up. It's normal to feel fear during this moment. It's normal to fear fear when we don't know what's going to happen with our RSPs and what's going to happen with our retirement money. I want to say it's normal to feel afraid with this whole virus thing, especially when we don't know if we have a cure or treatment. We don't know what's going to happen. And uh, I don't know what's worse, the virus or the way people react to the virus. Uh, you know, I'd be more afraid of going to grocery stores right now because I'd be afraid that people would step on me. Uh, but um, Joseph felt afraid. And I want to encourage anyone who's going through a tough time right now that it's okay to feel uh, afraid. It's okay to feel those emotions of fear. Now, I don't want to zoom on how he felt, um, but I want to zoom or capitalize on how he dealt with those emotions. That's actually the message today, is how did Jehoshaphat deal with this fear, with this panic, with this, uh, this feeling of being terrified? That's where I want to capitalize uh, during our And uh, I want us to watch what he did with that fear and those emotions. Verse 3, alarmed. Jehoshaphat resolved. We need to make a, res uh, uh, a commitment, um, a decision. Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord and he proclaimed the fast for all of Judah. The people of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek him. In verse 6, it continues to talk about how uh, Jehoshaphat began to praise God, began to talk about how great he is. In verse 7, it talks about how he's quoting things and events and uh, uh, memories of what God did for his people in the past, saying he could do it again. And uh, may I remind you that as he's doing this, this is all happening while there's a vast army coming towards him. Jehoshaphat didn't go into panic mode. He went into praying mode. He called the people to pray and fast and seek the Lord, inquire help 
of the Lord. And this is our encouragement that we're reminding the Word of God is that we bring all our fears to God. Whatever our questions are, we bring them to Him. I love what uh, Elizabeth Elliot once said. She says, faith does not eliminate questions, but faith knows where to take them. And I think that's powerful encouragement for the days we live in. That Faith doesn't remove questions. We have questions. I have questions. Uh, we all have questions. But faith knows where to bring those questions. And uh, we should take counsel of what Elizabeth uh, encouraging us. We inquire of the Lord's help. And uh, we bring our uh, uncertainty uh, to Him. We call upon His name uh, for help. And uh, what begins to happen... Uh, I know from my own life is that when I bring my fears, when I bring my uncertainty, my questions to him, suddenly I start being filled with faith and I start being filled with peace and I start getting uh, uh, joy, new joy. And what's interesting is that that joy or that peace, it's not something I have to work to get. It's not something I try to earn or try to fabricate in my own life. The Bible says that the peace I'm talking about is the peace of God. And the peace of God will guard your mind on Christ Jesus. And uh, this, is, this is what is important is that this peace comes from God. It's a gift of God. God deposits peace in our lives when we spend time in his presence and in his word. The second thing also is that uh, the Bible says it's the joy of the Lord. So that joy is not something oh, I got to be joyful and I need to earn joy and I need to find a way to have joy. No. The Bible says it's the joy of the Lord that is our strength. Therefore, it is something God gives us. Now, my job is to protect that joy. My job is to protect that peace because I can let fear rob me of that joy. I can let fear, uncertainty, anxiety, I can let all this stuff, the circumstances happening around me, I can let it come and rob me of that joy and peace, and I need to protect that. And so this is a beautiful gift that the Lord gives to the believer, his children. We can have peace. We can have joy in this time. And so that is why we need to bring, yes, we have fears. Yes, we have questions. But we could bring it at the feet of the Lord and inquire uh, of him. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Amen. So it's okay to feel fear, but it's, not okay to allow fear to stop us. When we're talking about the battle of faith, it means we're not letting fear paralyze us. Someone said, you know, there are things you want to do and you're afraid of doing them, just do them afraid. Um, and so that's kind of what the battle of fear is, is not letting fear paralyze us. Uh, there's a lot of things uh, we're called to do in this world that we will feel fear at times. It will it will ask us to do things we never did before. It will ask us to step out of our comfort. It will ask us to stretch our faith in those moments. Uh, and so we're, this is what the walk of faith, the path of faith, the, the life of faith is, is sometimes we just step out of the boat and we walk places God wants us to walk that we're not necessarily supposed to walk on, but we trust Him during these moments. And sometimes we'll feel afraid doing that, but we do it. Uh, we do it regardless, and that's what faith is, is not letting fear anchor you down uh, to do nothing. That's true courage. That's real faith. The Bible says in 2 Timothy uh, 1.7 that God did not give us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. Folks, there is a spirit of fear at work right now in or around us. Uh, and I'm not going to lie. But that's not the spirit of God. God did not give us a spirit of fear to his believers. He given us a spirit of power, of love, of self-discipline and self-control, sound mind. And someone needs to say this morning, Lord, fill me of that spirit. Fill me of your spirit in the midst of this. Fill me with fresh power and fresh love and fresh wisdom from above and self, uh, fresh self-control. Now, verse 13 says, All the men of Judah with their wives and children and little ones stood there before the Lord. So this is a message, this is a call, not only for the adults, but also for the families, for the youth, for the children and the little ones. They all presented themselves before the Lord. And in a time like 
today. We are to all bring our little ones, uh, bring the whole family. Who, who, who You're single, you come. Uh, you're, you're, you got a family, you come. You bring your grandkids with you. And we all seek the Lord for his direction, for his peace, for his joy, for his guidance. And we pray for a nation uh, during this time. So this is a, a call for all the family, the little ones. Families were coming before the Lord during this time. Verse 14. Then the Spirit of the Lord came on Jehazel, son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jael, really great names to name your children, um, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jael, the son of uh, Mataniah, a Levite, and a descendant of uh, Asaph, and he stood in the assembly. Watch this. The Spirit of God fell on this man. Verse 15 says, he starts speaking, listen. King Jehoshaphat and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army. Wow, a man filled with the Spirit of God uh, tells everybody in the whole nation, including the king, to not be afraid, to not be discouraged because of this vast army coming. Now, for the Spirit of God to encourage all of these people must mean that they were all in panic. Now, one of the things I like to do when I teach the Bible is I try to paint the character as well. I try, I try to really help us to really live in their shoes, to try to picture ourselves in their shoes to see how it was. But when I'm talking about a people in panic, a people uh, that are afraid, I just got to show a picture of, of Costco and you'll get the point. It was like that, but a little bit more amplified than that. So uh, that's kind of the context we have here. And, and this guy gets a prophecy from the Lord, and he's prophesying to these people, saying, don't fear, don't be discouraged, and don't panic because of this vast army. And uh, I pray that the Lord would fill us with his spirit. I pray that the Lord would help us to be a voice of hope and not of panic. I pray that the Lord would give us a voice of faith and not of fear in the times we live in for our nation, for our community, and for our family, for our church, that we would be filled with his spirit so that God would speak through us and reassure people and comfort them in the Lord. Now, I just can hear, if I go back to this uh, verse that I'm talking about, I could just hear the voice of, uh, skepticism when that man began to prophesy by the Spirit of God. Some probably thinking or saying, well, that says a lot about the level of his intelligence. Um, he doesn't seem to know what, what's happening in the real world. He's living on, in fantasy land, you know. He's doing some wishful thinking. Uh, you seem to be disconnected from reality. Hello, pandemic. Hello, vast army coming, you know. Uh. I, I, I'd love to go back in the DVD archives of that moment one day and <laughs> how, how was this happening, you know. The people are saying, really? But this man says, this is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged because of this vast army. Now, why? Why is he saying this? He's, he continues, he says, for the battle is not yours, but God's. In other words, this is my battle to fight, not yours, says the Lord. You've inquired for my help, and now I'm going to come and help. I'm going to step in and help you. Just don't be afraid, and don't be discouraged. I got you. There are things in this life that we are called to fight. There are responsibilities that only you can do and that God wants you to do. There, uh, our faith is a faith of action and not just words. And God fights with us during these moments. But there are other times where God fights for us. He fights with us, but he also fights for us. Things that are beyond our scopes and our abilities, beyond our understanding. And this vast army coming towards them was not something they could handle on their own. This was way too big, out of their league. But they called on his name. 
And all the people of Judah called on God for help, and their families and their youth and their children and their little ones said, God, come to our rescue. God, we need your help. Apart from you can do nothing. Come and help us. Come and help us during this, this, uh, this great challenge that is before us, before this storm that is before us. We know you did it before. Now we ask that you come and help us. And God came and helped them. God came to the rescue says, just don't fear, don't be discouraged. The battle is not yours to fight, it's mine. And God says, I will fight for you. You inquired of me, now I'm coming to help. Verse 16, tomorrow march down against them. They will be climbing up the pass of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the gorge in the desert of Jer Jehul. Verse 17, you will not have to fight this battle. Take up your positions, stand firm, and see the deliverance of the Lord will give you. Judah and Jerusalem, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged. Go out to face them tomorrow, and the Lord will be with you. Verse 18, Jehoshaphat bowed down with his face to the ground, and all the people of Judah and Jerusalem fell down in worship before the Lord. In a time where our world is in panic and is afraid, may the church call on the Lord. May the church uh, fall on their face and bow in worship before the Lord because the, there are things that we're called to fight and there are things God says, no, it's not your fight to fight, it's mine. And I believe that the, the life, the situation, the reality we're in, this is the fight that God only can, can do. Uh, we're going to pray like crazy that God would give wisdom to our medical people, to the experts in the field, to, field to find a cure, to find some treatment. But we're going to pray like crazy. But this is one thing that's beyond us, and we need his help. We need God to come and heal people, and more importantly, heal the soul of people today. I like what Billy Graham once said to encourage us today. He says, I've read the last page of the Bible. It's all going to turn out all right. How many believe it's all going to turn out all right? We don't know when Jesus is coming back. It appears that we are in the last days. According to the signs that he's described, no one knows the day or hour. We're called to be ready for that day. But the Bible says that when we start seeing those signs, our reaction, our posture is not one of panic. It's not one of being afraid. Our posture is to look up, uh, to look up because the redemption is near. And this is the one, uh, this is my prayer is that the church would not go hide and panic and, and, and just repeat the same rhetorics that we're hearing from the voice of fear, the voice of panic, but we would be a different voice. We would have a different voice, a voice of hope, a voice of inspiration, a voice that says God is for us, who could be against us, a voice that says no weapons, a voice that says no weapons formed against us shall prosper. Yes, we're called to have caution and wisdom and good common uh, sense, uh, but at the same time, we, we, we can't live our life like we don't have a God who takes care of his children and protects us. And so this is the message for us, an encouragement to inquire of the Lord, to bring our fears to him. Fears is okay as long as there's not a spirit of fear paralyzing us and holding us back. So I want to take a moment to pray for you, for your family, for our church, and our community during this moment. This moment. So if you don't mind, wherever you are, to just bow your heads Close your eyes for a moment. You could grab the hands of your family members that are in the living room with you watching this on the television, on the, on the mobile, or on the uh, monitor in your computer, wherever you are. Let's just, in one voice, lift up our, our hearts, our requests to the Lord, and pray for the God of peace to fill his people with fresh peace and fresh joy, and fresh strength, and fresh vision, and fresh purpose. Right now, with our physical eyes, we see that it's uh, doom and gloom, but we are looking with the eyes of faith, the eyes in our hearts, the eyes, we're looking at our problems today from the perspective of God. So today, Lord, we come today in the name of Jesus, the name you said, we could ask anything in your name, and we shall receive. 
Today we lay this, uh, this problem. We lay our giants. We lay this coronavirus. We lay this, uh, these fears and these anxieties. We lay it all at your feet today. And Lord, because your word says that that's what the solution, the strategy is for fear. So today we bring all these fears to you today. We ask to replace fear with peace. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding. The peace of God that comes from you, that is a gift from you. We also pray for new joy. The joy of the Lord that is our strength. Thank you for filling the church with fresh vitality and fresh energy and fresh hope and fresh vision and fresh courage. God, that they would walk out back on Monday when they go to work or when they go and speak to their kids or when they speak to their neighbors, that, Lord, they would have a different tune, a different sound to their voice. They would have a, a complete different voice. They would have a voice of life, a voice of hope, a voice, Lord, from the Lord, from spending time in your presence, uh, a voice of assurance that says, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for this is not your battle to fight. This is the Lord's, and the Lord will be with us. Uh, uh, yes, put yourself in position. Yes, put yourself with assurance, but you're going to do this only to watch what I'm about to do, to watch the salvation of the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for fighting this battle for us, fighting this battle of disease for your people. Thank you for standing for our nation and our community and our church. We ask that, Lord, the people, Lord, you would protect the people. You would watch over Clarence Rockland. You would watch over Prescott Russell. You would watch over Ambram Limoges, Castleman Russell, and all the surrounding areas. You would watch over Ottawa and, and all of Canada. You would watch over our world right now. Lord, thank you for your protection on your people, the churches, Lord, that are meeting online at this very moment. God, be with them, Lord. Reach down and touch your people. Thank you for fresh courage. Lord, let the church be the light in this moment. Let us not be hidden under a bed or hidden in our closets, but thank you for using the church to shine in this moment, Lord, like never before. And I thank you for calming our hearts, calming our storms in the time we are in because you're greater. You've been given the name above every other name. And you have not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power. Thank you for fresh power on the church, Lord. Thank you for what you have in store for us. In Jesus' mighty name, everyone say amen and amen. Again, thank you so much uh, for being with us today. Again, we're working really hard at providing uh, encouraging, uh, truthful Bible preaching and edifying messages and and services online. And so if you're not connected, uh, make sure you're connected to our YouTube channel, uh, the church platform, uh, newsletter, Facebook, and Instagram, everything there. And uh, the church will be open during the week for you uh, to stop by if you want, unless you're sick, <laughs> please. And we, we will pray for you, but uh, we just avoid um, coming here if you're sick. And we'll pray for you if you want prayer. Uh, but do uh, do stay tuned to uh, our post. We're going to give updates on when we can actually meet again. May God bless you and bless your family. Amen.